this one. I'm uh, probably the uh, professor at the Telecom and a new member of the uh, Geeks. So I will talk about uh, random walks and simplification complexes. Uh, it's a joint work with Thomas Bonis, uh, Viet Kitran, and Tian Song. So, uh, just first, you know what is a random walk on a graph. So, you take a graph. So, I'm talking about continuous time random walk. That means when you, uh, so the pointer doesn't work on the screen. So, when you are on a vertex, you stay at this vertex during a time which is exponentially distributed on parameter of the degree of x. And then you choose one of the labels uniformly among the labels of, f of x. So this is um, the Markov process, and as a Markov process it has a generator, and uh, this generator is uh, given by, if you apply this generator to a function f, it's the sum of the neighbors of x of f of y minus f of x. This is the functional definition of what you can write down with a matrix, but uh, for uh, points, function of points can be identified with vectors. That's an important difference with what we come after that. And if you think of L as a matrix, the coefficients of L are what? You have the degrees on the diagonal, and then you remove the adjacency symmetrix. Adjacency symmetrix is uh, 1 at A, I and J if you have an edge between I and G. So, this is well known. Uh, the question is, what is there beyond graphs? A graph is uh, something to represent a relationship between two objects. But if you want to represent a relationship between three objects, for instance, you can imagine that you have a picture you have the place where it has been taken, and you have the guy who has taken the, the picture. So you have a triangle of relationships between uh, three things. So this is called hypergraphs, and it's used in databases. The very same object is the notion of simplicial complexes, and it's used in geometry, in the topological data analysis. And I, I, I won't say a word on that because uh, it will be the subject of uh, the following. And the very same thing is the monotone Boolean function. So what is a monotone Boolean function? Say you have a function on 0, 1, dot, uh, to, to, to a power n. n is 10, 15, whatever, as large as you want. It represents 0 if you, have a, if you are a man, 1 if you are a girl, 0 if you are tall, 1 if you are small and so on and so forth, and you have a function of this uh, n plus which is 0 or 1. And it's increasing in the sense that if uh, your uh, sequence of 0, 0, 1 gives 1, then if the sequence is greater in the lexicographic order, then f of this should be also 1. As soon as you have reached 1, are larger, you stay with one. Actually, all these things are the same thing. So, what they are if we go with simplicial complexes? So, it's the, the simplicial complexes are for geometry. In hypergraph, you have no notion of geometry. In Boolean monotone function, you have no notion of geometry. In simplicial complexes, you have a geometry, an underlying geometry. So imagine you have these five points, and you have, uh, imagine this is antennas, and uh, each of these antenna has a coverage radius. And they can communicate if the coverage radius, they can, no, so not communicate, they can monitor a region inside the, uh, the circle here, and you put an edge here if these two the uh, station uh, have an intersection of the cover. 
So if they are close enough. Okay. So you put your edge, edges between points which are close enough. So here you have uh, I don't know, three, five, six, six edges. And now you have, you have these two triangles here. You have a triangle one, two, three, and a triangle two, three, five. Why? One is solid and the other is empty. It's because if you look at the balls centered in one, two, three, you see that they do not meet. Uh, the intersection of the three altogether is empty. On the contrary, the intersection of the ball centered in two, three, five is behind the blue here, but it's not empty. So that means if you think about coverage, that means that 1, 2, 3 doesn't cover the whole domain, you have a coverage hole here. So that means that if I'm representing this as a simplicial complex, simplicial complex is vertices, edges, this is a graph, and then you continue after that, you add triangles. And then, if I had a richer structure, I could have uh, octahedron, uh, tetrahedron, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So, a C pleasure complex are relationship be between not only two points, but three points, four points, five points, etc., etc. So, uh, here I have only one triangle because this one doesn't count because these three balls do not intersect. And since I have no, uh, I can't go uh, any any longer. I can go. I can't go to this right one here. Okay. This is the rule to, con to construct uh, this kind of simplicial complex. You have many other rules, but this is the one, the one which is uh, the simplest to explain and the, which has been a lot of properties. Any example, uh, one no. I don't put it in the list of triangles. Okay. Okay. It's a triangle, yeah. but I don't put it in the list of triangles. It's still a triangle. So what you what you do with that is that you construct, you have a geometric situation, then you have a combinatorial object here, and then you put some algebraic structure on that. That's why it's called algebraic topology. So how do you put uh, an algebraic structure on that? Consider that you have uh, five uh, vertices, you have uh, six edges, <coughs> and you consider a sort of adjacency matrix. For the edge one, two, you, that means that you have an implicit orientation on one, two, it goes to one, from one, so that means you leave one, so you put a minus one, and you arrive in two, so you put a plus one in two. On one, three, you leave one, so you put a minus one, and you arrive in three, so you put a one, a plus one in three. Okay. This is a rule like any other you may change. So you ask the question, is it important the, the, the choice of uh, the... No. Uh, but it, it, it must be fixed uh, all along the to construction. Have yeah, but you have a choice. And then you do the same thing with uh, the next step. That means you have the edges here and you have only one triangle. So how do you compute uh, the coefficients? You have two, three, five. First you remove two and it remains three, five. So you put a plus one. Then you remove the 3, so it leaves you with 2, 5. But it's the second operation, so you put a minus 1. So you put a minus 1 in front of 2, 5. Then you remove 5, you get 2, 3. And you don't change it, because it's the third operation. It's like when you, you expand a determinant uh, along a column or a line, you change the sign at each step. Okay? So this is kind, uh, you can uh, you 
can go further if you have a octai uh, tetrahedral. I'm sorry. Um, you have a you take a, you have a matrix M3 with all the triangles here and all the tetrahedron here, and you do exactly the same thing. And the thing is, so for, for instance, if you compute so uh, partial two is the uh, linear operation whose matrix uh, is M2. And partial 1 is the linear, the, linear, the linear map, which corresponds to M1. So if you uh, look at it, in term, not in terms of matrices, but in terms of endomorphism, you see that the delta 2 of ABC, so you remove B, it gives you BC, you remove B, you get BC, AC, but you change psi, and you remove C, and it gives you A. When you have partial 1 of AB, you remove A, it gives you B, you remove B, it gives you A, but you change sign. Okay? So you have a sequence of linear map. And the thing which is marvelous is if you take the vector space generated by the vertices, that means you are allowed allow to uh, say, okay, I take 3 times the vertex A minus 4 times the vertex B plus, I uh, don't know, P times the vertex C and whatever you want. So you have an algebra, you have a vector space whose basis are the vertices. Okay? And after, you, are also, you have also a vector space whose basis is the edges. And then a vector space whose basis is the triangles. Each time you have the family of simplicial complex, you, have, you construct a vector space on. Do you, do you need any assumptions on the field? Can it be a. You R can, or you or can, you can, you. you, uh, you it may be a, a module. You don't, a module you, don't, you don't even need to be, to be, to be a field. Okay. But it's more complex. <laughs> they are this theorem. Right? Once you have this, uh, when you have, when you have this, uh, this vector space here, the image of partial one is a subspace. Partial one takes a vert an edge and gives you a vertex. So in terms of uh, linear map, that means it's a linear map from the vector space generated by the edges into the vector space generated by the vertices. So it's a subspace of the vector space generated by the vertices. And the miracle, the magic, whatever you want, is that the quotient space of the, uh, of the vector space by the image of delta 1 is, is a vector space whose dimension is exactly the number of connecting components. Why? Because when you take delta 1 of B, that means that you take a point here and uh, where you can add the boundary B, take A, take 1, and you add the delta 1 of this edge. So you are going into 2. That means that in this space, 1 is identified to 2. And then 3, 2 is identified to 3, 3 is identified to 5, and 5 is identified to 4. So that means that everybody here, in this case, everybody is identified to 1. If I add another point here, it would create another equivalence class in this space. So it's rather easy to see that, it's rather easy. intuitively it's rather easy to see that uh, this gives a number of connected components. If you want a proof, uh, it's a proof of two or three pages long. It's not that simple. Yeah. Sorry, I have a very stupid question, but uh, you said that uh, you represent each graph using a vertex basis, or x basis, or triangle basis. Yeah. Could you remind uh, what is the meaning of the intensity of the vector along the one of these? No, 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 it's algebraic. It's purely algebraic. 
just uh, I have a family of vertices. I have a family of they vertices. Are just multipliers? Pardon? They are just multipliers? Yeah. They are the basis of the vector space. Whatever you. At this stage, you remove the geometric interpretation. Once you have constructed the simplicial complexes, you remove the geometric interpretation. That's it. But in this theorem, you retrieve the geometric interpretation. Just to, uh, to be clear, for example, what is the uh, vertex uh, based uh, representation of the graph that is displayed on this side? 1, 2, 3, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, that's just this. And for uh, edges, this is uh, basically the edge uh, identifier. Uh, it's also the yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Every edge is free from any other. Okay. This is a 5. V is a spine of V is a, a five-dimensional space, and uh, the, the space uh, generated by the edges is a six. Uh, uh, so this is the blue index, is Yeah. Okay. yeah. And you can choose any field you want. The field of all the field. Yeah, yeah. It's more if you take uh, the thing is, uh, of course, if you have if you don't have a vector field, you don't have a. Uh, if you don't have a field, sorry, you don't have a vector space here. Yeah? So you have some torsion which appear. And, uh, but, uh, but with, with field, this won't be the subject of uh, this. You have a lot of, of stuff you can do. Uh, and the, uh, the next theorem, it's uh, if you take the partial 2 of ABC and then you take partial 1 of partial 2 of ABC. That means you reapply partial 1 to each of these terms. So you will have C minus B minus C minus A plus B minus A. And if you trust me, it's 0. You have B minus B, A minus A, and C minus C. Everything is considered. So you have partial 1 composed with partial 2 is 0. And that means that the you can consider the vector space, the quotient space, which is the kernel of partial 1 uh, divided by the image of partial 2. What does that mean? That means that kernel of partial 1 are cycles. You start from somewhere and you end up at the same place. Partial 2 and major partial 2 as are the boundaries of triangles. So what does that mean? That means that you count the cycles which can be written at sum of as sum of triangles. So 1, 2, 3 is not a triangle since it's not in my list of triangles, but it's a cycle. So it creates one uh, equivalence class in H1. You see that 1, 2, 5, 3, 1, 2, 5, 3, 1, yes, it's a cycle, and it is, it is 1, 2, 3 plus a triangle. But a triangle is in H1 identified to 0. So 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 5, 3 are the same, uh, identified to the same thing in H1. So that means that the dimension of H1 is the number of coverage all. So that means you, you start from something geometric, you transform it in a combinatorial thing, you put some algebraic structure on that, you make some computations, and then you retrieve a geometric interpretation. So we did a lot of, uh, we did, we did uh, four or five papers about this subject, about the application of this stuff to uh, uh, telecommunication systems, because it gives you a practical way to decide whether or not your uh, deployment of antennas covers a full domain. So it's very uh, a very effective uh, way to decide whether or not there is. A Array of antennas. Okay, so uh, what is it now? Now we have partial one and partial.
partial two which are in your map, and we can consider their adjoint or their transpose. Whatever you want. What does that mean geometrically? The partial one star of two is the this counts the this describes sorry the edges which are adjacent to two, taking into account the, the orientation. That means the partial one of two is one two because one two arrives into two. It's minus two three because two three is adjacent to two but it leaves two. That's a same thing for two five. You can also look do the same thing for uh, partial two. So partial two of an edge is the triangles which are adjacent to this edge. So partial two of two three is two three five. There is only one triangle, and partial two of one three is zero because no triangle is adjacent to one three. Recall what one two three is not in my list of triangles. So, and if you do that at the zero degree, you consider the partial one, partial one star. Ah, surprise! You retrieve the graph Laplacian. You retrieve the diagonal of degrees minus the adjacent symmetry. So you have another definition of the graph Laplacian. And the graph Laplacian is the generator of the random walk. Since you can define a graph, a neither graph Laplacian, this is a group, a neither group, an operator on edges, what we want is to find what could be a random walk whose generator should, should be L1. That was the main motivation of this work. So why is one is L up and one is L down? Why is it so? Because delta two star, partial two, delta two star of an edge is a triangle. And then you apply delta two, so you go back to edges. So that means you go from edges to edges through triangles. So you uh, up, you go up in the uh, structure of uh, synthesis, and this one you go, you start from an edge, you go down to points, and then you go back to edges. That's why it's uh, down because you go one step below uh, in the rank of synthesis. Okay. So in L zero, uh, you may have, uh, you should have uh, delta one. Uh, delta 1 star plus delta 0, delta 0 star, but delta 0, delta 0 star is 0. So, uh, but you, go for, you can go further, you can consider L2, L3, L4, and so on and so forth. Uh, the thing which is interesting is that the kernel of L1 is isomet isometrically, isomorphic, whatever you want is identified to H1, which was uh, the class of uh, of holes. So, uh, what I would like to say is that all this algebraic stuff it can be done on a computer in a very efficient way. It's not very complicated. It's all about uh, finding uh, uh, what is called uh, Smith normal representation form or something like this. It's like Gaussian. Uh, Reduction or something like this. It's, it's, Can we go back to the earlier slide just to see the. So, um, what is the so you say it's, it's the. This is also the Laplacian of. Uh, this is the Laplacian of L1. Mm -hmm. And so, you want to give a, a stochastic interpretation to this Laplacian? Yeah. And it's a way to move from an edge to an edge, right? Exactly. So on this example, just to visualize, so on this example... Uh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so That's the subject of the talk. Okay, 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 okay. No spoiler before, it's, it's time. time. It's time. So, uh, there are, when we started to look at this problem, we found only two papers on the subject. 
one is 2014 and one is 2016. Actually, only one is published, and the other one is still uh, a preprint of archive. Uh, there, are, there are probably good reasons for that. What did they propose? You, when you start with an edge error, uh, you consider a, a lazy random walk. That means with ITP, you don't move. And uh, with priority uh, one half for, for the rest, either you go like this, either you go like that. Okay. Problem is when you have when you have this kind of situation, what are you doing? So you take the, these two edges together. I don't know why. So this one, these two move, don't move with priority P square. This one doesn't move with priority P, and this two, this one is transformed into these two. Or this one doesn't move, and this one is also with these two. Or whatever, but it's, it's a mess. It's really a mess. So this happened. Uh, so here the triangles mean triangles in the simulation. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's if, in an, if, if an edge is part of two triangles. Yeah, triangle, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But it's a mess. It's a total mess, and. Uh, by guys which are topologists no, not provist. And uh, there is a very, very surprising result, which explains that it isn't published. Uh, it is that you need to be, P to be large to have some information on the topology of a, on the underlying, underlying graph. So the less you move, the more you know. <laughs> The speed to go to zero with one track? No, you can't. Yeah, but uh, you need to have you need to have a priority not zero non zero to to stay uh, idle to have something to, to know something. I don't know uh, I think it's completely uh, I think it's false, but uh, actually it's not the good way uh, to do this. A good way to do this is to say, okay, what are we doing when we do a random walk on a graph? You go from x to y uniformly among the neighbors of x. What are you really doing? You are going to x plus the boundary of the edge x1. That means you don't choose a neighbor. You choose an edge which is adjacent to your vertex. And then to this vertex, you add the boundary of this edge. Oh, yeah. it's, not exactly, it's not exactly the same because you have some parallel edges to uh, vertices. Uh, if you have parallel vertices, you will have. Uh, edges. We see. You will see. It will be appear in the weights. Yes, uh, I, I was just uh, seeing uh, equivalent to that. Uh, to no, no, it's not equivalent to that. So uniformly, it's not equivalent to that. Ah, okay. Okay. But what you are doing really is you choose an edge, what, with whatever weight you want, and then you do the vertex, you add, you add the boundary of the edge. So you see the interest to have a vector space. You can add things. So what could you do in uh, at the next step? That means that you have vertices I replace by edges, and boundary of edges are replaced by boundary of triangles. So the thing is, what you are going to do is to consider an edge and to add the boundary of a triangle. But an edge plus the boundary of a triangle is two edges. So that means that the state space is not edges, but it's sequence of edges. You may have two edges, three edges, and maybe one edge may be counted with a, a, a weight 2 or with a weight 3 or a weight pi, whatever you want. So that means you have a sequence of edges, and this is called a chain. You have chain and cosine, and this is called a chain in topological 
So the state space is not edges, but chains. Means finite number of edges. So uh, you define uh, a vector a scalar product between uh, two edge, two edges, uh, because you have to take care of the orientation. What you want is, if you add, what you want is, I choose this edge, and if I add this triangle, you see, okay, uh, this plus the boundary of this, this, this we can, this we, uh, we can solve, and this two we can solve. And uh, so it will remain only this edge. Okay, that's the idea. But if I choose the triangle, in the other orientation, that means going like this okay, anticlockwise, then I don't want it to be counted. I don't want to add this path in black to the reverse triangle in blue. I don't want this. I want it. But uh, there are some considerations. So, uh, that means the transition rates are K, tau and tau prime is one. Uh, if tau is not tau prime, you got zero. That means if you have if you have an empty uh, chain, you are stuck in the empty chain. Okay. You can't create anything from zero. And uh, what does that mean here? That means that you uh, look at your path. You take each edge of it. You look at all the triangles which are adjacent to this edge with the reverse orientation with respect to your edge. Okay. That gives you a certain number of triangles. Maybe sometimes in this situation this triangle is counting twice. And you choose among all these triangles which one you will add to your current path. That what means this transition rate. The plus is to be here to ensure that, because uh, I count in my list of triangles, I have all the triangles in their both orientation. So I keep only the triangles with, with the orientation, which will cancel the sign of my uh, edge. So what do you get since you had only boundary of triangles, and in H1, the boundary of triangles is zero. Because in H1, you divide, you make a, yes, you divide by the image of delta 2. So if you, are, if you have a boundary of a triangle, you are in the image of delta 2. So that means that xt and x0 belong to the same homological class. So if your initial path is around a hole, all your path And if zero is in the, the recurrence class of X zero, then your Markov chain will die. It will reach zero. One way or the other. Zero as a path. At path. Path. It's a new path. So, the get the curve, so you define the Markov chain on on the on the chain. On the chain. On the chain. The chain. The chain. The chain. The chain. May, maybe not, so not maybe really not so no, it's a linear combination of edges. Linear That's what you're right. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, and the Markov chain is the Markov chain on this uh, for uh, H1, right? Yeah. Is the Markov chain on this chain? Yeah. And the, so, the unif, the the equivalency of the random walk is choosing the one triangle at random among those which are adjacent yeah, to, to, the, to the, current, uh, the current family of edges uh, which, which have a positive, uh, positive weight. Yes, and when you say uh, yes, it, uh, if, it, if it initially had circ uh, 
contains a hole. Yeah. Uh, so when you say, okay, so this could be interesting even for cases which are not. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Of course. So the, the generator is given by this. It's a uh, usual definition. And the difference between uh, points and edges is that function of edges are not necessarily they can't be identified to uh, to a vector because I have some of, uh, of edges okay. but if f is linear what we get and 2 is a cycle we get what we want to that means the generator is minus L1 not minus L1 but on the cycle L1 uh, down is 0. So <coughs> that's good. So we get what we wanted, that means a link, an, an interpretation of at least one part of uh, the uh, random walk of, uh, of the Laplacian as the generator of the random walk. So we were happy. So so the, the chains can change length, right? So that's yeah, of course, yeah. Because zero can yeah, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. can be so, so. Yeah. And uh, okay, and so the, the Markov chain could be transient. So yeah, because you uh, you would add. What's the question? I okay. <laughs> so now, if you consider a vector. Imagine you have a, a finite number of, uh, of edges and you consider this vector which is the probability that uh, zeta, the edge zeta belongs to the chain. Okay. At time t. It's not very difficult to show that it satisfies this differential equation. T omega, t omega t, t of omega t is minus L1 of omega t. And there is uh, an observation, a conjecture by uh, Muhammad and Eggerstedt. Still, uh, this paper was published, but no more, they didn't publish anything. Uh, but just look at this equation in a proper context like this. And what you see is that the uh, component of omega t with the largest weight are those which are around some holes. It's not proved. It's just an observation. But just say, okay, when we look at time, when t goes to infinity, and we let the uh, look at this vector, the weights are great around the holes. And smaller far from the rest. We don't really know why, it's just an observation. Uh, and we are trying to get some intuition of that, but it's not so clear. So, what can we say about real irreducibility? Consider this octahedron. This is a very, very symmetric picture with a lot of isometries. The thing is that the isometries here doesn't, don't mix well with, uh, with the rest. So you have six vertices, 12 edges, eight triangles. Okay, that means any path is the path, the initial path, plus Tg is, Tj is the list of triangles, one of the eight triangles. So what I can do is I can uh, put 0 or 1 here and all my path can be written like this. What does that mean? That means that if x0 is given, so for instance take x0 is 1, 2, 3, 4, the equator, you may reach at most 2 to the power 8 Chains because you have, you have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 
one pen count. So you have at most so two or it is uh, two for uh, uh, two hundred fifty six or something like this uh, chain attainable from X zero. How many chains do you have? You have two to the power twelve. is 0 or 1 for each edge. So at least it can be irreducible. Okay. That means that you have two to power, you have 16 uh, recurrent slabs in this, uh, this simple chain. Okay. So irreducibility is something which is very hard to determine. You don't find any indication, so this one I will skip. And another question is, can we characterize the stationary probability? Can we have, can we have some sort of, say, it's the uniform probability uh, with, uh, with respect to uh, something? We thought we had found something, and uh, but uh, I discussed with, discuss with some other guys, and uh, it's absolutely not clear why, why uh, it would be like this. You see, you consider the, the, the equator as initial path, and then you look here, the stationary probabilities are very stratified. And that's very strange because uh, the most visited, the mostly uh, the edges which are the most visited are the ch chains of length 4 which are, adjacent, adjacent, which are adjacent to all triangles. The equator is adjacent to all the triangles. Okay. And uh, it is one of the guys... This is not... Sorry, this is the, the path which are the most Path which are the mostly visited are the path of N4, then the triangles, and then at the end, uh, the less visited path are the path which are adjacent to any right triangle. But it's just an observation on this model, and we couldn't find any uh, general rule to, to say, okay, uh, uh, it's always true that the chains with the largest uh, number of adjacent triangles is uh, the most visited. Uh, we didn't find it. Uh, but we don't know what the stationary probability is, but we know what the spectral gap. We are bound on the spectral gap. So that you take triangles, you take all the triangles, and you will construct a graph on the set of triangles. Okay? And you put an edge between two triangles if they have a common edge. Okay? And the set of reachable triangles are you start with one triangle and then you look at all the triangles which are adjacent to this triangle and then to the triangle adjacent to all these triangles and so on and so forth. These are the adjacent triangles. And uh, you have a, a simple bound, which means that the second largest eigenvalue in module, modulus is bounded by 1 minus 2, divided by the number of uh, reachable uh, triangles from the initial path. So you take the initial path all the triangles which are adjacent to this path and then add all the triangles which are adjacent to, adjacent, uh, to these triangles and so on and so forth until you explore all the triangles. You count a number of such triangles and then you have 1 minus 2 divided by this number. So since you have a large number, you usually have a large number of triangles, that means that beta 1 is, this bound is not so, it's very close to 1. Okay, so the picture. So what is the picture? So we try to get some intuition 
on what happens on what we know is that we, if we have a finite number of triangles, we have a, a stationary gravity, right? But what happens if we have if we have an infinite number of triangles? So what is this picture? Take the triangulation of a plane. Took a lot of triangles, equilateral triangles. So what you do, you remove one triangle. Remove one. Otherwise your chain will collapse. And uh, you do it, uh, you do this uh, on the whole plane. Okay. And you start with the path. Simply you start with this path. And you let the long book grow. That means at the beginning you have this, this, or this triangle, you choose this one, and then you will arrive at this, and then you will choose this one, you will arrive at this, etc. And after, uh, I don't think it's two trillion or three trillion iteration, if you look well, you have. So what do we have? We have something which is not connected, which is a sequence of islands. Uh, you have an island here, and you see uh, it goes from here, here, here. I don't exactly know where, where it stops. You have this one here, you have this one here, you have a lot of disconnected components. It's very strange. What you know is that uh, if you take something which doesn't count, when you take a, a little uh, cycle here, which doesn't, which, has not, which is not, which doesn't contain, sorry, uh, the initial triangle, you know it will die. Because uh, if you count the number of triangles which are inside it, and the number which are outside it, you realize that at each step, you have priority one half to uh, decrease the number of inside triangles and one half to increase the number of inside triangles. So you have exactly with a random walk plus one minus one in the critical region. So you know, you know it's new right around. So you know that it will reach zero, but maybe it can touch down, it can touch another island here and then merge and then regrow. And what you know here is that uh, you always have something, a source of, uh, of fresh air. You will never die because the connecting component around the red triangle will never die because we remove the center.
It's a very, very tricky evolution. And the thing is, if I go back to the to this to this random work, at the beginning I, I thought that with all the symmetries I had with this figure, I could say something. Okay? What you can imagine is to say, okay, in this situation, all edges are the same. Because my initial picture is invariant by translation? Absolutely not. Because if you start with this edge, the edge which is adjacent to it, you cannot obtain it by adding some triangles. So, you do. so the, the, the isometry, the, the geometry uh, doesn't help you to say something about the evolution of a one -on one. So uh, this is another result which is just in a, an interpretation, uh, an illustration. The reasoning I told you before, which is to say that if you have something which doesn't count zero, which doesn't contain zero, you are going to die. Okay? It applies as long as the boundary of your set doesn't touch the initial triangle. Okay, when it touches the initial triangle, it, it creates a bias because uh, the edge touches the initial triangle. You can't. This triangle is not available. So it gives you a drift which um, changes the priority to increase the, uh, the surface, the inside surface, is more than one half because you can't decrease. Okay. The right idea is the following: the idea is if you have a potato like this, the number of triangles here and the number of triangles there are the same. So I have priority one half to choose one on the side. So the number of triangles in it is minus one. Okay. One half and plus one of priority one half. But now, if here I have my initial triangle, which I remove, that means that it's no longer one half one half because here I can I have if I have n triangle here I have n minus one triangles inside. So the probability to increase is greater than one half. So the argument doesn't work any longer. So this represents a point here means that during 1,000 iteration, uh, more than uh, 27,000 of them were with an edge uh, touch, were touching the initial. That means you the, the picture here, the, the, the highland here, touches the uh, initial triangle very often. And sometimes not at all, but then you have this system of breathing. It's increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. So during this, you have an expansion, you are in an expansion phase, and then you, you are in a contraction. Uh, we don't 
know, we know nothing about that this time, except the simulation. So what, when we know, when we don't know anything, yeah. So the, the picture is a visualization of the steady state, not the transient thing of something that we call it. So what? Yeah, it's a state. Is? It's a state after a three billion uh, iteration. Right. But so you think it's a steady state? Yeah, the phases are this. That means when you look at the evolution of, a, right. of it's like this. Right, but if, if you look at the space of finite, uh, so I mean, you, you can look at uh, I mean the space of uh, CPC is compact or not? No. Okay. So the notion of uh, of recurrence is limited. So you, you what you We absolutely don't know because when you look at the simulation, you uh, you can look at the total perimeter of uh, the whole stuff. So it's increasing, but slowly, slowly, and then decreasing. We don't know until the, the precision of a picture is not enough to de to determine whether it touches zero of, uh, or not. But it's decreasing after uh, two billion iteration, and then it goes up. So we absolutely go. At, at most, it's new right. In my opinion, if it's something, it's new right. Now. It's not positive. Right but uh, it's likely to be transient. So the, 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 uh, the statement that this is a picture of a given time, but I mean, not, not necessarily. Uh, no. Form. And when you 
you have uh, something which is uh, well known for guys who are doing uh, this kind of stuff, which is the Stokes formula, which is that the integral of alpha along gamma is the same as the integral of the exterior derivative of alpha in the domain defined by the curve. If your curve defines the domain. And the exterior derivative is dq over dx minus dp over dy. This can be generalized to a range, whatever, uh, and with higher order uh, differential form. And uh, okay, and now you have some another operation, which is the Hodge star operation. So the Hodge star of dx is dy, the Hodge star of dy is minus dx. So, so there are good reasons for this definition. And uh, what you have is that you have something which is L up, which is star uh, partial, star partial, and L down, which is partial what you know. So it's exactly the same. The denominations are the same because you start with uh, one form, you go in the space of two forms, then you go back to one form, then two forms, then one form. See, one, uh, a one form is a one. The star of a one form, sorry, the star of a one form is a one form, the star of a zero form is a two form, and so on. And so, on. so that's, that's exactly the same principle which, uh, as before, you go from one form to one form, but you, you pass through two forms or through zero forms. And L is L up plus L down. That's the ex exact analog of what we had before. And per, you have L up, okay, you can. Uh, what is L up. So uh, <coughs> L here would be uh, what is called the vector Laplacian. So it will be uh, Laplacian P dx plus Laplacian Q dy. Okay. But L, L up alone is just this. But the theorem is that an of the integral of uh, alpha over xy is exactly the, by definition the integral of the external derivative of uh, alpha on the delta 2 star of xy, that means this triangle, and that means that it's minus 3 fourth epsilon 2 L1 up. Same for the square, more or less, and what that means is that if you have something such an f, f of phi of the integral over sigma of uh, the differential form alpha 1, differential form alpha k, if you renormalize by the same, uh, with the same factor as for the random walk on uh, vertices, it converges to uh, essentially. That's what you expect. Okay. Uh, and the proof uh, is uh, it's the proof for it. the result is for, for now just limited to this example because it's, it's it depends extremely on the geometry of the, of the graph. Simpler here because you have a, a lot of isometries, so cancellations in the, in the expansions, which gives you whatever you, what you want. If you have a random set and a random set of points with a random set of triangles, you cannot control anything. And uh, I don't know what it uh, gives you. What it will do from there. And, yeah. So, what are the perspectives? The question, first question is. What is the process behind this limit? That means it is running motion with value in differential forms. It goes further by my knowledge. Uh, you can compare graphs by looking at eating times of, of, uh, of uh, random walks. You take two graphs, you take a random walk on two graphs, and you look 
at some meeting time and you compare graphs like this. Can we use this to compare these institutional complexes? Uh, another question uh, is if the conjecture that uh, the random wall concentrates on edges which are close to the ball, can we use it to find a minimum weight basis of the ball? That means if, when you solve the equation L1 x is equal to 0, this gives you a basis of the vector space which uh, around the hole. But it's, it's very often not the case that it's a minimum vector. You may have, you have a cycle around the hole, that's okay, but not a minimum cycle. So can we use the random walk to uh, find the minimum weight basis? I might have another question about uh, time uh, topological time data analysis and data stream, but I won't talk about it because the first tries we made are a total failure. So we won't talk about this. Okay, these are the, uh, the, the references. Uh, if you want to uh, if you want to learn more uh, about algebraic topology uh, this one is the best. It's very clear, even if you don't know anything. Uh, we there is a, a paper of uh, these two guys uh, in notices of the AMS, which is a joke. It's, it's perfect. Uh, okay. I saw, I saw, I, I saw a, a thing on Facebook, <laughs> uh, something which was, uh, you, are, you, you have a friend, okay, so you have an edge between two guys, and then one of these two guys meet another friend, and now A is a friend with B, with C, and C is a friend with B, but A and B are no longer friends. So you remove the edge and you have two edges. Uh, that's what happened when you had the triangle to uh, But I don't know what would be the interpretation of uh, what physical system would be like this.
a piece of application of, of, of that. Okay. Because uh, you can, as, as long as you use random graph, random work on graph to compare graph, you can note this random work to compare the special properties. Okay. So that means you have a reference complex and you want to compare with this reference complex. So if, if you have an image, for instance, which is characterized as its topology, you want to compare to, to have some distance between this image and so forth. But it's, it's something we didn't look at.